Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will discuss remote shellcode injection. Malwares usually use this technique to inject shellcode into benign processes such as notepad.exe, run dll or msi exec. In the last video of local shellcode injection, we discussed the flow and the API used. The same applies here as well. In this video, we will go over the code used for remote shellcode injection. We will go over how we can see this in action in the debugger. And lastly, I will show you how I can use the same technique to inject Havoc C2 beacon into notepad.exe. With that, let's get started. So here I'm in my virtual machine. I have Visual Studio open in front of me. Let us create a new project. And the project is going to be an empty project of C. I will create this in the dev IT folder and the project name is going to be remote shell code injection. Create. I'll add a new item here and the new item is going to be source.c and I will paste the code that I have created previously. Now there are a couple of things which are which are problematic here so let me fix those and I will tell you why they are problematic and we can discuss the details of those later in the video as well. Uh, let me quickly fix them. All right. Okay. Now let's look at the main function. In the main function, we have stated the target process is going to be notepad.exe. And in this function, get process ID by name, we are passing the process name and this is going to return as the process ID. This process ID is then going to be passed into the inject shellcode function where it is going to be uh, injected uh, with our shellcode. Now, a couple of things for us to understand. If you look at our inject shellcode function, this is the calculator payload which has been generated using this command okay this is an msf venom payload with uh, windows x64 executable command and the command that is going to execute is going to be calc.exe the exit function is thread okay we, here we have the payload and what happens after we pass the process id into which we want to inject our shell code we open this process and we get a handle to this process after that we call virtual alloc x on this process by passing the handle over here we have to specify the size of the memory that we want to allocate into the target process and we say that we want to allocate it as page read write after the memory has been allocated we are going to call write process memory ignore these functions for now print message and wait for key these are basic functions which are used for us to uh, print a message on the screen and then wait for the user input this is just for debugging purposes for me to show you what is going on uh, after that we call write process memory where we are actually writing the payload to the target process and then we are calling virtual protect x where we are changing the protection of the executable memory to uh, page execute read and lastly we are calling create remote thread okay uh, and then some handling of the um, thread waiting and clearing of the memory etc okay so let's start notepad and let me press play over here the first time we'll run this it will not work uh, okay so there is some other error which i can just comment out again this is something that we look at at the end of the video as well Okay, so it says the process ID of notepad.exe is zero, inject shell code failed, open process failed, etc. etc. Okay, why is this? This is 
uh, an intentional error I wanted to show you because this is something encountered by a lot of people who are doing development in Visual Studio and when they especially start off with the development in Visual Studio. So you have to come here to the advanced screen and select use multi byte character set. Apply. Okay. Who would have thought that this is an error related to the configuration rather than the code? Okay, so the process ID is found. We are seeing virtual alloc X done. Press any key to continue. Uh, after that, we are calling write process memory done. Press any key to continue. Virtual portrait X done. Press any key to continue. And now we have the calculator open in front of us. Okay. Now let me close this and let me close this. Now, if you want to have a better understanding of how this is all working, we have to debug the notepad as well to understand what exactly is going on. So I have opened up notepad over here. And before I start our injector process, I'm going to attach the debugger to this process. So file attach notepad attach. Okay. And I'll press play over here. Okay. Next, I will press play over here as well. Okay, let's go to this location. The memory has been allocated. So we can go here, right click, go to expression, control V. Okay, so allocation is done. What is the next step? The next step is write process memory. If you go here, we can see write process memory is done and the shell code has been written over here. If you go to this memory, Follow in memory map. And we see that currently this process memory or this um, allocated memory is read write uh, permissions. And let's see what happens next. Again, press any key to continue. Virtual protect X done. If we go again to the same place, memory map, we see that this is now changed to execute read. Okay. And if we continue again, all right, notepad is open. Okay, so that was a quick way to understand how we can load uh, the uh, shell code in a remote process. Okay, uh, there is one function that I did not discuss, uh, which is the function that is used to get the process ID by name. This is a function that I discussed in the previous video as well. This uses the create tool help 32 snapshot uh, windows API, and it passes in this parameter to get the snapshot of the processes. Then it uses process 32 first and process 32 next to iterate through the processes. And once it finds the process by name, it returns the process ID of the target process. All right, so that is all fine and good. Next up, I want to show you how we can use uh, the same code to inject Havoc payload into our target process. And that is where our uh, shellcode.h and other uh, things that I had uh, previously uh, fixed are going to come into the picture. Okay, so shellcode.h inclusion is one firstly before we uh, start off i have this ssh open uh, with my cali box and here on my cali box i have have a running so i can say that attack payload and give me a window shell code generate the shell code we just wait for the shell code to be generated In the meantime, let me tidy up this folder as well. rm minus rf shellcode.h. It's fine. All right, so it's asking us the location of where we want the shellcode to be generated. I will generate this in the yt folder. Let's save, replace, yes. Okay. So now the shellcode has been generated and now we want to add the shellcode into our uh, code over here. So how do we do that? We have to use this command xxd minus i daemon dot x64 dot bin and output of this command has to go into the shellcode dot h file. Okay, uh, press enter over here 
and if we start up a python server over here as well we can go to this folder and a shellcode.h is there let me right click on this save link as go to the desktop devyt folder go to remote shellcode injection and uh, remove this one and save it here okay now this shellcode.h is added to this folder now we have to add it to this project add existing item shellcode.h okay and if i go to the shellcode.h we see that we have the daemon underscore x64.bin which is the actual shellcode and at the end of this file we have the size of this array as well so this is the shell code and this is the size of the shell code as well okay so now we can add the parameters so let's go down and instead of the t payload i want to use this variable okay so wherever t payload is used which is over here over here over here and here and here okay so there is no other place where t payload is used all right so now let's execute our shell code again let me start off notepad press play virtual alex done write process memory done inject shell code done and let's see if we have a beacon we have a beacon over here okay we can interact with it and we can say ip config okay so here the ip is 192.168.0.23 if we look at this 192.168.0.23 okay so the shellcode injection has worked perfectly so that was a quick video about how we can do shellcode injection into a remote process i showed you a couple of things of how uh, we can add our shellcode over here and what is the code that is used to uh, inject the shellcode into the remote process i also gave you an idea of how to troubleshoot uh if the injection does not work via x64 dbg where you can see the uh memory being allocated and the data being written to that allocated memory so that brings us to the end of this video thank you very much for your time